uh, well, so if we imagine a pure will, one that's not subjected to such temptations, but always acts automatically on the basis of what is objectively good, well, for this kind of being, an angel or a holy will or whatever, uh, there wouldn't be imperatives. There wouldn't be requirements on it. It would simply automatically act according to what is in fact good, what's objective. So perfectly good will would not, not be subject to imperatives, would not be subject to demands, because there would be no temptation to do otherwise. Um, okay. Questions about that? So now we'll, we'll talk about us. For us, we have subjective goods, some of which are determined by our mere desires or inclinations, but we also have a capacity to be moved by pure reason toward what is objectively good. And what is objectively good is presented to us by our reason, our practical reason, as a demand, as a requirement. Okay, so practical reason, through its imperatives, presents us with demands to act in a certain way, in one way or another. In other words, practical reason is presenting to us certain ends, or certain actions, as good, as objectively so, we say that again. What imperatives do, what imperatives are, are demands from reason telling us that something is good, that something is to be done. And it's demand, it's presented as a demand on us because we may have empirical temptations to do something. Is that clear? Okay, so the question now is, sorry, so imperatives declare some action to be good, some action to be ob objective, whether we happen to like it or not, whether we happen to have an empirical inclination toward it or not. So this is, sorry, so this is what he's saying over on 27. Um, all imperatives are expressed by an ought, and by this indication, the relation of an objective law of reason to a will that according to its subjective constitution is not necessarily determined by it. So, um, imperatives present demands of reason to creatures who are not necessarily moved by that. Can be moved by it, but also can be moved by other kinds. They, imperatives, say that to do or to omit something would be good. But they say it to a will that does not always do something just because it's represented to it that it would be good to do it. Yes? Okay. Um, so now the question is, good in what way? How do represent, in what way do imperatives represent some action as good? as valid, as objectively good, or objectively valuable. Um, well, the obvious case is a hypothetical imperative. And a hypothetical imperative is going to represent some action as good, even though we might be tempted to do something else. It's going to represent as good because that's what will bring about some further end. So a hypothetical imperative is going to represent some action as good because that action would bring about some other outcome. Um, and that other thing uh, could be will. That other thing could be taken as good. And a hypothetical imperative is going to recommend some action as good on the assumption that that further end is good. 
So the value of some n is going to be recommended by reason on the assumption that some further n is good. The, the value of the recommended action is going to piggyback on the assumption that that further end is good. That's how a hypothetical imperative recommends some action as good. Notice it's going to recommend it as good in order to bring about something else which is simply taken to be, assumed to be, worth pursuing. Categorical imperative, in contrast, is going to recommend some action as good for its own sake, not in order to bring about some further end. Okay, so we need to try to explore these ways in which an, imp an imperative can recommend some action as good. Um, what he's saying on um, 28. Okay, um, so first of all, he talks about the idea of on um, 29 at 4.15, he talks about an imperative of skill. So an imperative of skill tells us what has to be done in order to achieve some other end. Um, so these, so imperatives of skill are going to be hypothetical. They're going to say some action is good because that action will bring about some other end. And if you take for granted that that further end is something that's good, then the means will be good also. Um, so there are lots of things. There are lots of imperatives of skill. They say things like, if you want to get rid of a headache, take an aspirin. Or if you want to do well on the test, study for it. Or if you want to kill lots of people, bring a gun and don't forget the ammunition. Okay? So these are going to tell us the means, the rational means, by which to achieve some end, which is itself noticed the end is simply taken for granted as good. It may, in fact, not be. But from the point of view of the, imp the, the imperative of skill, it's just assumed to be. Let me say that again. An imperative of skill does not make any uh, further determination about whether the end is good. It just assumes that it is. And given that it is, it's good to do a certain thing. Um, let me quickly mention the idea of an imperative of prudence. Um, an imperative of, of prudence says that um, because we are all, we human beings, are assumed to um, have happiness as our end, the satisfaction of our desires, um, um, there are going to be means to do that, to bring that end about. So uh, imperatives or um, uh, let's say imperatives of prudence are going to be skills in attaining our happiness. The problem is that our happiness uh, is something that is indeterminate in things, that we can only figure out empirically what our happiness consists in, so we're never going to know exactly what that end consists in. Okay, but we can, we have lots of rules of thumb about what to do in order to attain happiness. So, like, parents don't know exactly what will make their kids happy later in life, but they want to teach them skills that have a wide range of uh, uses, right? So, um, so these kinds of uh, imperatives are going to be things like get a good education, or invest for a rainy day, or mm, get enough sleep and exercise. Right? These are going to be things that are recommended by reason as good in order to achieve the end of happiness. 
We don't know exactly what that n will consist of, but these are wide ranging and generally useful things. Um, and lastly, um, an imperative of morality is going to say that some action is going to be good not for some further end that it will serve, but for its own sake. Um, so notice that uh, imperative also is going to be hypothetical. Something is going to be good because it will bring about some further end. But an imperative of morality is recommending, all imperatives recommend some action as good. Imperatives of skill and prudence recommend some action as good because that's the way to bring about some further end. Imperatives of the imperative of morality are going to recommend some action as required for its own sake. So we'll pick up here on Monday um, and we probably we'll get close to finishing section two. We should have three through the end. Thank you.